It is my pleasure to introduce our second speaker, Dr. Patience Ntunzi Kufa, um, who will be presenting on the biophotonics re research that she does for the development and design of novel healthcare solutions. Patience is the head and research group leader of the biophotonics at the CSIR. She holds a PhD in physics from the University of St. Andrews, Scotland in the UK. She was bestowed with the order of Mapungubwe in bronze for her national and international contribution to the biochemistry and biophotonics fields. Well done, patients. Her research interests include the development of photonics-based point-of-care diagnostic devices and biosensors for communicable and non-communicable diseases, machine learning for point-of-care diagnostics, as well as the design of screening devices for uh, substandard medication. Patients, the podium is all yours. Thank you for the introduction, Chair. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, good afternoon. Sorry for the morning. I think it's because my brain is still thinking it's morning. I am not 100% this afternoon. So I will be talking on the research that we do in the biophotonics team. But I will also just um, challenge the audience to a moment of two of reflections um, in my first five or six slides. Um, and I think you will see as the presentation goes through, why do I do that? So I have a challenge of 15 minutes to beat as well. So thank you, Isaac. Um, I'll talk on healthcare challenges as well as future possibilities. Then I'll touch on the biophotonics research we do within the CSIR. I will um, touch on the problem statements and what informs those problem statements. I'll outline the technology. And then finally, I'll touch a bit on the outcomes. So let's look at the challenges. And um, when I talk challenges, I'm not only looking at South Africa, but I'm looking at Southern Africa. Why is that? Geopolitics teaches us that um, even as we design problem statements and we are driving strategies, research strategies within the country, it's very important to consider what's happening to our neighbors. So that's why I'm actually taking an approach to actually look at challenges, not only in South Africa, but in Africa, specifically Southern Africa. I came across this um, clip that I'm going to play. It's not a very long one. I would like for you to just listen to, watch, and reflect upon. Okay. Like <laughs> I think about talks about seven years ago. Then down. Today, I'm figuring I'm six. 
But I want to be my chair. I'm seven. Sasala, surround us on Kispet, but seeing I must figure when we are little building, but the same build. A bag of figure want to be my wheelchair. Yeah, I spent the whole day together and it's not nice because of I was to the boy who told Lucy it was a normal pregnancy, just at one according to my ama cat, it's a cover of saying over two. A problem is spelled the treatment that one in Koshak. A problem is that it's spelled the same. I slept. Man, I was discharged from that what like labor room. I was feeling very much. I was having a foot. After I was having a relationship, like she rested for 20 minutes, then we were taken out to a passage for more than three hours. Slept a passage because was a sense of danger. Like we were like stretcher. No, I'm done. In such a second as one day, the papers are changing around. Like, and then there's no privacy. We have one. We are breathing up. When the Louis legal loss is stretched, I'm done. I'm up. I pick up. I'm up. It's just a nanny. We lay up for two hours uncomfortable for three hours before we get some water. It's a nanny that's better. I'm sure the audience will agree that's not a very positive message, and it's happening in Africa. So um, as we design strategy to try and challenge that particular picture you've just seen now, let's think about theories such as the future back theory. So what present forward thinking tells us, the present forward is the now, right? It's, it's full of information. It's full of knowledge. It is driven by rules. It is driven by data, it is driven by information, and it's driven by what you can see and test. Whereas future back thinking has got very little knowledge, it's very heavy on assumptions, and it is used to discover what could be. So this is where we are now thinking possibilities. 
in terms of healthcare, what are the possibilities? What would we like to see the future in Africa, in South Africa, look like in future? Okay. So I'm going to play the second clip. And again, I would challenge you to just reflect. What does it look like to reimagine the possible and change the way that we think about healthcare technology? It looks like the future. A future where we can conduct clinical trials and develop new therapies from anywhere so we can deliver the right care everywhere and where physicians and patients are empowered to make more confident decisions with technology that leads to smarter outcomes. It's a future that facilitates innovation and collaboration on an unprecedented scale and orchestrates people, insights, and technology to redefine what's possible as we turn our new ordinary into the extraordinary. The future of healthcare is now. Let's explore it together. Right, so the future of healthcare is now. Let's explore it together. One of the tools we are currently using to define the future of the healthcare in this country is 4IR. 4IR provides solutions to a lot of challenges, including um, education, climate change, the likes of service delivery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In Africa, we know that we have a serious problem when it comes to things like large data infrastructure as well as skills. And it doesn't help that we are actually having a lot of brain um, drain as well. However, we know that through techniques like artificial intelligence, through techniques like machine learning, which we are exploring in my team, we can actually plan for a different future to the first video that I have shown. So definitely 4IR is paving the future and a positive future if we think about it um, using the strategy of future back thinking. So that's enough with the preaching. Let's get on to the business of the day. Thank you for entertaining me to allow you to reflect a bit. Okay, so biophotonics at the CSIR. My presentation is not going to be um, technical because I do understand that some of the members of the audience are actually not scientists. I know that the CSIR conference is open to both scientists but also to the general public. So for purposes of that, I'm not gonna go too technical. Also for purposes of um, IP protection, I'm not going to go through the technical detail, but you are welcome to inbox me if you've got very specific questions. And if I'm comfortable to answer those questions, I will answer them. If I'm not, then I'll have to kill you after I give you the answer. <laughs> okay, so um, biophotonics within the CSIR, what do we do? So the biophotonics team comprises a mixture of disciplines and the uh, composition of the group is also as such. So we are playing in the field of photonics. Photonics is actually the heart of our research, but we are also very knowledgeable about pathogens as well as biological entities. And then we are putting our foot now in the space of medical devices. So we want to make devices, or we are currently making devices. So this is a very unique combination, both globally and locally. And because of this, our group gets a lot of international in, um, attention. Now, what informs our research? Why do we do the research that we do? Firstly, when we define strategy, we, we think of our neighbors, as I said, um, geopolitics drive our strategy. Two, what drives our strategy is what is the possibilities going forward? Who can we better the life of? So our research is customer centric. And customer centricity means you have to solve a, an existing problem. And that's exactly what we define our research topics to answer. If you look at this picture, there's really nothing wrong with it. It's a fully kitted laboratory, probably has running water, electricity, it's got a highly trained um, technician. And um, this is where samples of the likes of you and I 
land up when we go to a doctor. If I go to a doctor now, he or she will examine me and then define um, what's wrong with me. But then to get more information, he or she might send me to have bloods drawn for more tests. And uh, my bloods will um, end up in a place like this. And then two or uh, three days later, my results will be sent to my doctor. So that's diagnostics, right? Now, in Africa, there's a big divide. Just six and a half hours drive from here, rural KZN, this is the picture when people are going to clinics. Now, when I say customer centricity, this is our customer. So our research has to give an answer to this problem. So what is the pro potential solution we can actually come up with to answer this? One of the things we came up with was doing point of care diagnostics. So point of care means anywhere where the patient is. It doesn't have to be in the hospital. So the, the, the diagnostics will reach a patient wherever they are. What did we do? So the team and I came up with a smartphone device that can be used for diagnostic purposes. And this particular tool can actually diagnose both communicable as well as non-communicable diseases. It's got novel hardware as well as software that we have designed. And as I said, you know, it's still under protection. So I'm not gonna go through too much in terms of the technical detail, but um, just as a form of um, illustration, this is what you could picture, you know, with the hardware as well as um, the phone. You put your sample there. Samples can come in a form of urine, blood, or um, saliva. And once you put your sample and take a picture using the back um, camera of the phone, then it gives you a picture that will then inform what kind of disease is in the sample. Okay, because different molecules absorb light at different regions of the spectra. Let's say if um, this is your control, this picture here is your control. Once you put a sample with a disease, what will happen is that one of the colors will not show or will dim down. And then it allows us to then interrogate the picture further to then say what kind of uh, infection does the patient have. The technology is currently being finalized for commercialization very soon. The second problem um, that we had a look at was that of substandard medications in Africa. Excuse me. So the problem here was when we looked at research, we found out that one in 10 medical products in developing countries like South Africa is actually substandard or falsified. That's quite alarming, right? And this is not just um, you know, hearsay data. This is reliable data that we're getting from who. So while that is a problem, in certain countries in Africa, as medications come from Asia or wherever they come from in the world, there's absolutely no screening of medication. Medication comes in, no quarantining, and it's dispatched. And then it ends up in areas like, you can see this lady here in Abidjan, she's in a market. And as the audience would appreciate, medication just as food needs to be stored in a preserved manner. You can't just leave you know, medical um, supplies under the sun for the whole day. You don't know what the patient is going to be getting at the end of the day in terms of quality. Is the API still preserved when you've bought medication in an area like this? This is a big problem because our people are consuming medications, but they are not getting the results. Now, again, this is a huge problem. If you look at this picture, it actually amplifies how big the problem is. There's a Chinese officer going through lots and lots of seized medication in Beijing, China. Some of this medication would have ended up in our shores here in, Af in South Africa. So what, as the biophotonics team we thought of doing is design a device that will allow us a bulk screening of medications as they come into the country. And what allows us to do that is a simple setup that we've put up in our facility. It's a Raman spectroscopy setup. We are building novel sensors 
that allow us to detect uh, at single molecule different types of um, samples, okay? So for example, to test out the system and to just give it a dry run to see if it works, one of the things that we did was to run a disprint um, sample. And we didn't only run disprint, but there was a different type of aspirin that we actually ran on the system. And it was quite interesting to see the differences in terms of the API content of the two different brands of aspirin. So um, if we, we, we're going to have any, any good coming out of the medications, we need to make sure that the patients are taking what is actually labeled in the box. So that's my story for now. I've, I've shown you two technologies that have got very huge potential to go into commercialization. One is closer than the other. This is also uh, coming on, but quite slowly, not slowly in, in, per, per speed, but not, it's, it's not as ready as the first one, let me say that. So um, that's what I've, I've, I've decided to share with you this afternoon. So to conclude, I did challenge you to have a look at uh, challenges as well as future prospects of healthcare in Africa. And I did challenge that um, the researchers in the room, as we derive our research questions, let's not only think about South Africa, but let's think of what geopolitics are teaching us. What are our neighbors experiencing? Because that can also better inform how we structure our research. I've shown you the development of a novel smartphone point of care device that we've tested on various communicable diseases, but it also works on non-communicable diseases. You saw that in the clip I played at the beginning, non-communicable diseases are actually a big threat going forward, and 2030 is not that far off. Finally, I presented on the work that we are doing in terms of um, bulk screening of drugs that are to be um, coming in the country. We're going to make devices that will be put at different entry ports in the country to do that kind of screening. Colleagues, or rather um, audience members, this work is not being done by me only. It's done by a group of super smart people, people I want to be when I grow up. So this is the team and the brains behind the work. It's not the entire team, um, as the students are not reflecting here. But in, um, going forward, students, if you are seeing this and are listening, don't think, oh, we are being sidelined. Not at all. It's just I had to use pictures that I, I could access quickly. And I would also like to thank our partners, particularly the Department of Science and Innovation. With that, I would like to thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>